Hello, everybody. We are here with uh, the series finale of Tales from the Tavern. I know. I'm like, I can't even keep up with chat, you guys. Like, there's so many people in chat right now, and I'm just like, oh my god. Um, we have a really awesome group of people here tonight. Um, I'm going to go around. We'll do introductions in a minute. Um, but a few things that I just want to uh, make sure that I uh, emphasize is that um, we are raising money for Extra Life tonight, uh, exclamation point donate if you would like to pull up the link. Um, if you also scroll down into the like about section, there's a, a link in there as well. Um, so feel free to uh, help raise a few more dollars for Extra Life. We we kicked uh, our goals ass last this past summer when we were uh, fundraising and uh, it would be nice to go out with a little bit more that we can add to the total. So um, if you feel so inclined, that is there. Um, we also will have some giveaways. So I'll start those after we do the introductions. We've got four giveaways to get through tonight. So that's very exciting. Um, we also have hot sauce and candy corn is involved. And I we were talking about bad jokes beforehand. So... We got all kinds of stuff to do, so let's uh, let's get this show on the road and go around and do some introductions. We're gonna start with Matt. Tell us a little about who you are and what you do. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Matt. You may know me as Dungeon Glitch from the online's primarily Twitter. Um, I make nerd T-shirts. I'm a Dungeons and Dragons influencer. I make music. Uh, if you're interested in any of that, uh, the link is probably somewhere on the screen. Yeah, there it is. And. Uh, it just hit me up. I, I love talking about all of it, and I love helping small creators. So, yeah, super thrilled to be here tonight. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Um, thanks for allowing us to call out your bluff about candy corn and hot sauce. And um, it's going to be fun. So, speaking <laughs> of calling out the bluff about candy corn and hot sauce, Dan, <laughs> tell us a little about you yourself. No, I was going to be next with this horrible train we're on with candy corn and hot sauce. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan. I'm in the space as caffeinated underscore Dan on Twitter. I'm part of the organization creatorsassemble.org, where we do a lot with helping to support educators with the use of comics, video games, TTRPGs with education, uh, interviews, and all that good stuff over on our Twitch. Check out our website, creatorsassemble.org. We've got some cool stuff coming up tonight. And yes, I too am also wearing a Dungeon Glitch shirt tonight. Woohoo! Represent. Because, yeah, this required wear at this point. I think over. I've actually, I'm to the point where I'm almost converted all my wardrobe over to Dungeon Glitch <laughs> merch. So I'm living a very comfortable life. Yeah. Comfortable I indeed. know. Best t shirts ever. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, Dan, I'm glad to have you back. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining us tonight. Rain, tell us a little about yourself. Ladies and gentlemen and non-binary friends around the world, my name is Rain. I am a TTRPG player and GM. I am a freelance video game journalist, and I am very happy to be here today. I am humbled by this esteemed group we have today. I am super excited that you're back. Uh, I am excited that we uh, we get to have you. If, if anybody doesn't know Rain, Rain is uh, big, big uh, in my Discord server, always around, um, you know, always, always there to chat with everybody. So, uh, you know, definitely uh, give them a follow if you're not already checking them out on Twitter. So um, thank you, Rain. Star, a.k.a. Vampire Shinobi. <laughs> How are Good you? evening, lads, lasses, and non-binary badasses. I am Star Shinobi. Uh, you can find me at Star Shinobi on Instagram and Twitter. I just generally like to talk a lot about TTRPGs, make a periodic uh, magic item from time to time. And I also play a life oracle on the Waffles Maple Syrup Pathfinder 2E actual play Outcast and Outclassed. I love it. Awesome. Uh, Star, I'm super glad that you're here. I don't think we have a final total of the number of times you've been on the stream, but it's a lot. Eight. Eight? <laughs> yeah, I knew it was up there. So, like, you, Shannon David, all of that stuff. Shannon beat me. Um, oh, plot hooks. I see you. Thank you for stopping by. I'm sorry you can't stay, but I appreciate you. Um, I'm really glad you're here. Uh, guys, if you uh, have never checked out any of Plot Hook's work, uh, definitely, definitely do that. Uh, Samuel makes some amazing content. Um, and, Especially uh, Disaster Hamsters 2, which is coming out very, very, very soon. Very, very soon. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I know. I'm so excited for that. I can't wait. Awesome. And Wolf's Blood. Hey, everybody. I am Wolf's Blood 2012, and you will no longer find me on Twitter's 2012 Wolf's Blood. Instead, you will find me as Elon's Dead Taint. <laughs> and uh, you can find me there anytime you need to get a hold of me on Twitter from now on. Uh, one exciting thing that we do have going on is I am going to start a Saturday afternoon show 
Uh, it is going to be an episodic campaign. It will be uh, done through Aether and Steamworks. It'll be hosted on uh, Luna's Discord. And I should have that up and running here in the next couple of weeks. And that way uh, we can all get together, have some fun, bounce in, have a campaign once in a while, and enjoy. Yes, and uh, for anybody who doesn't know, which I'm not really sure how at this point you wouldn't, but Wolfie has been uh, my my number one moderator. Uh, it only like a half step above everybody else, though. It's just because like you know he's been doing it forever. So, um, and uh, he's been around forever and ever and ever. So thank you, uh, special thanks to Wolf's Blood for hanging out with me all of these all of these years. Um, because you've been monitoring this stream pretty much since it started. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. True story. I was there in the before times, too. In the before times, back in, in the, the day. <laughs> when we were on two different channels. I need your scratches. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, I'm really sorry. This is also going to be the last time. Um, and uh, if you don't know how the stream works, basically all of our... Uh, questions come from you here in chat. So if you have a question for anybody uh, on the panel, feel free to drop that into chat. Um, we would love to know uh, what you want to know about our uh, TTRPG escapades. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wolfie, I don't know if you saw in chat, Aura says Wolfie is bestest boy. I have asked for ear scratches too, so <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, we also have the ask my question next for a thousand channel points. You can have your uh, question bumped up to the next one in the queue. Um, so feel free to use that. We have three of those available. And um, somebody has already redeemed the cat treats. I will give those out as soon as I have a cat in the room. So, um, yes. Uh, thank you, David Tilstra. I think my crown is amazing also. Um, I'm a fan. I've also actually been asked to wear it to work tomorrow. So I will nice. be wearing it to work tomorrow because why not? Um, all right. So I'm going to start one of the giveaways before we do We dive into anything else. Um, so the first one we're going to do is a, uh, a uh, from Underground Oracle. Um, they have donated one of their quarterly pri one of their quarterly bundles um, to give away. So I'm going to start that right now there we go i think there we go um exclamation point enter to uh to enter for that and um yeah we'll draw the winner for that in a little bit um we've got three more giveaways so if you don't win this one definitely have a chance to win a little bit later on and uh yeah there you go so um I've already seen a question come in from chat, so we're going to dive right in. I've seen a few questions come in. Uh, let's see. The first one is from Zeal Zaddy, and Scott would like to know, if you started your own TTRPG con, what would it be called and what would make it awesome? I actually just had this conversation. <laughs> I, already know, I already know my answer. This is fantastic. All right. Well, tell us then. So my con would be called Power Leveled, and it would just be all about helping small creators find the quickest way to make their their brand profitable and it'd be less about hey let's hang out and do all this stuff it's more like hey we're going to network and actually go through workshops and learn stuff and so it's like it, it would be like uh small business things marketing things um uh, how to work with freelancers how to extend as a freelancer that kind of stuff so and then that would be, be fantastic actually all kinds of really cool games to play too that would also encourage these skills so I think if I started one, it would be GMs Assemble. And it would specifically be a convention to have people come learn techniques on how to GM, try their hand at it if they want to, play some games. Because I know a lot of people, their hardest thing is, I want to GM, but I don't think I'm good enough. It's like, well, just come. We can kind of help you out. And you can have an opportunity to try on people who will never see you again. So it doesn't matter how you do. <laughs> So I'm just going to steal uh, Matt's and Star's idea and just call it like BetterCon 2.0 and do all of that, but in a reverse order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. Wait, wait, <laughs> PunCon, where you have to do nothing but puns during your games. There we go. I'm pretty sure I've played a game like that before. Haven't we all? Yeah, true. Those were dark, good times. 
No, nope. very true. I am. I appreciate y'all doing this wonderful outreach, helping, blah blah blah. I do donkeys and dragons, <laughs> and I am teaching every player how to be the best ass at the table, be entertaining, and completely kick the shit out of their DMs. <laughs> All right, sign me up. I'm with that. <laughs> and it happens concurrently with Stars uh, with Stars Con. <laughs> come learn how to deal with it from me, and come learn to how be that way from. Wolf. Right. You can, we got to find a city. Thing. We're gonna need a city with two convention center, two convention centers right next to each other, right. so they can like you know dance number off the way towards each other. Oh my Minneapolis god! Minneapolis Convention Four Center literally has three convention centers in the same building. Yeah, we got the same well, thing down here in Nashville. Go. Let's about give her, <laughs> we can do I'll it. Have you, I'll come out in the middle of winter. Wolfie Nicola says that she would like to host a panel at Donkeys and Dragons. All right. Nicola, <laughs> one hundred percent yes. <laughs> yeah, basically like a basically like like a versus con where you get you get Star's idea on one side and then you get Wolfie's idea on the other side and then they all have to come together at the end of the uh, at the end of the conference at the end of the convention and just have it out. Just winter take all. You have like GMs. the ultimate D and D game where you have to show off everything you've learned. We just LARP at the yeah. end of the middle. <laughs> like a March Madness. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought that was implied. We all dress up and fight each other. I like the March Madness. Like we'll have the brackets and. Oh yeah. Yep. To we could have sports possible. betting in a third complex. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, my group's gonna be betting on it. <laughs> we'll contract Matt to make all the T-shirts. It'll be great. <laughs> I'll be the one trying to fix Team the fight, Pete Rose style. <laughs> and Midwest Miniature Guy is definitely invited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. You know, before we get to our next one, I think we're missing something. I think we are too. I Go think for we're it. Missing some spice in life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, Lovely. so Wolfie's gonna tell everybody about the hot sauces that we're using, and I will tell you, some of us are doing this like normal people and eating uh, chicken nuggets <laughs> or some variation thereof. Um, Star uh, is not doing hot sauces. Some of us, though, are using check. candy corn. <laughs> Let me explain why we're doing this. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so last year, uh, pretty much on the same day at the be at the beginning, I. Like, I think it was October 1st we actually did it. We both, yeah. Dan and I had both posted about candy corn and everyone hated it. And uh, so we kind of just, Dan challenged me like, hey, we're going we're gonna to do a candy corn post a day. And uh, whoever can keep it up consistently wins. And um, I actually botched it twice, but uh, uh, I got Rax to retweet me. So yeah. Dan graciously called it a draw. So, <laughs> uh, no, I said he won. <laughs> and uh, well, the, and, and then one of the posts was I had put sriracha on one of my. I was running out of material for candy corn, so I, I just like, yeah, you know, I I put sriracha on everything. So I did it, and uh, everyone's like, oh, that's nasty, and I got a bunch of engagement. And uh, at social media, and then Dan goes, bet. <laughs> and then I got involved and said, guess what we're doing next year on Tales Man. from the Tavern? <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yes, here we are. All right, Wolfie, tell everybody, tell the people at home what we're doing. Well, what we are doing right now is we're going to take a tour of the world using hot sauces. And our first stop is going to be down in South America, particular in Rio de Janeiro. We have a citrusy yet smoky uh, hot sauce coming up and uh, is one of my favorites. I hate beyond words candy corn. I believe it is candy sad and therefore I will never ever allow it past my lips. So I will be doing chicken nugs. However, because Star is not doing any of the hot sauces, I will be doing all of the hot sauces for her. So I will be doubling up on all sauces as we go. Forward. I will be doing the candy cane for Wolf or the candy corn for Wolfie. So I will be doubling up on that. Nice. <sighs> <laughs> All right, I'm covered in the De Janeiro or De Janeiro. Oh my god! Yeah, that with candy corn is not uh, a good mix. <laughs> mm -mm. Candy corn is only sugar and honey. Here goes nothing. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's not bad. For anyone who's this curious, is awesome. uh, this is the that's set actually... that we're using for candy corn for uh, hot sauces. We found it on Amazon, so 
Yes, Kitty this got treats great. already, so she's happy. Yes, we found this on Amazon. It's called the Global Hot Sauce to Go uh, from the Modern Gourmet. It has all of the hot sauces in it. It was what, like eleven bucks, you guys? Fifteen yeah, bucks. Yeah. It wasn't terribly expensive. All yeah. right. Okay. Two. I feel like we need to go around and give our taste profiles of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, Why yeah, not? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it tasted like yeah, hot, yeah, so hot sauce and candy corn. <laughs> Yeah, that was well, bad. Yeah, I will say this, I'm sure the sweet and hot actually mixed pretty well with that one, in yeah. my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I'm mean, saying that's that's all you're gonna get from this. Yeah, <laughs> I it's, wasn't. It's, it's not I bad. wasn't totally sure. Like when I first ate it, I was like, "Oh, this is not good." And then, like after it sat for a minute, I was like, "Actually, it's not terrible." <laughs> it mm -hmm. tastes a whole lot better on chicken than it does on fingers. Yeah. What if they were chicken Wait. fingers? I'm about, I'm about yeah. to test, I'm about to test that theory the myself. Finger? Which also leads me to ask, where does the chicken ring come from? What part of the chicken gives itself to the chicken ring? The chicken finger. Um, yeah. I, I, I could answer that question, but I don't think you'd want me to. I could too. <laughs> I could three. Star and I are on the same level here. I don't get it. <laughs> it's, it's everything that is legally edible that they didn't use in anything else <laughs> wait that's a real thing what mm. oh yeah mm -hmm. yep. yeah it is a chicken is... chicken rings and chicken fingers are a cost effective product <laughs> oh yeah Nicola, chicken ring is exactly what it sounds like it is pressed chicken that has been formed into the shape of a ring so it it's is like rounded, an, it has a hole in the center, which really leads me to ask where it comes from. It's oh, like right. an onion ring, but worse. <laughs> Luna, I mean, orcs it's, did it's still edible chicken. It's just, Fair. right. you know, the rest of it. Eek. Um, yeah, oh. orc did ask how many channel points to make someone drink the whole bottle. Uh, first of all, I oh. nominate wolf's blood. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I don't know, wolf's blood, what do you think would be fair? I don't think it's channel points. <laughs> uh, all right so well, how much for the donation here money is it bad that my first thought was check the sodium level on that to make sure that's safe right <laughs> we're right. all adults here let's, let's not kill someone with soy or with this like we can with soy sauce so i, really I like mean why part. are we why are we even doing this Luna. What did what did we just do? Uh we just did the Rio de Janeiro so um 100 milligrams of sodium Per one teaspoon. There you go, Star. We are Donation raising money extra for life. Extra Life, you guys. So, True. exclamation point donate if you would like to donate to our Extra Life uh, our extra life funds. I also dropped a link uh, to the uh, hot sauce pack if anybody is interested in ordering that um, and trying it out for themselves. But, yes, if anybody would like to donate to get Wolfie to uh, drink an entire bottle of hot sauce, Wolf's Blood, what would be a fair donation? I'll leave that up to our viewers. Oh. I'll let them decide. Fair enough. Okay. Um, I refuse to drink the uh, Cuban one, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Cuban one's going to destroy you. That that one's... Yeah. yeah. We haven't made it to Can that just, one yet. We... All right, so while chat squabbles auction. over that one, I'm going to move on to the next question that we have. Uh, and this comes from As Was Foretold. Emily would like to know, what is your favorite or most memorable moment from Tales from the Tavern over the years? <laughs> I have so many, you guys. <laughs> Actually, too. that leads me to an excellent point. At the break, you're going to want to stick around because I have a highlight reel <laughs> from oh, 2022. Cool. And Matt, you know what's in it? Yeah, I'm I think Amanda I do. Shepherd. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is one of my favorite moments. Yep. Hanging out with Commander Shepard. Yep. That was so dope, and I'm super grateful we got to do that. Yeah, uh, so there's probably one of my favorites right there. <laughs> yeah, my, my my other favorite was uh, when, uh, I think it was the first or second time I was on, uh, and Adam, uh, Adam the Great was going through everything on Gemmed Firefly, and he couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> I think I was on with that one too. And we had I to remember keep stopping that the show to tell everybody what he was laughing at. <laughs> he was laughing. Yeah, he. Yes, I remember that. I was on that episode too. That was last year. A good ten minutes of it was us just going through and laughing mm -hmm. at all the great things that are on there. 
And that was that was special. <laughs> My most memorable I was not on for, I was watching, but it was um when David Tilstra broke his chair. Oh my god, that's in the highlight yeah, reel too. Absolutely. <laughs> I still can't watch that without busting out laughing. Oh, it still gets me. It's still oh. <laughs> because he's like, I broke my chair, and then it really breaks. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was so funny. Oh god, that was during the last hot sauce challenge. <laughs> <laughs> That was so funny. I, oh, yeah, the battle think, of the backgrounds with Bees and B-Dave. That was really yes. funny. If you weren't, like, they didn't even talk about it. It just kept happening. <laughs> so, like, Dave would change his, and then Bees would change his. And then Dave would change his, and Bees would go to, like, you know, it would be, like, a movie character, and Bees would pick another character from the same movie. And <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, uh, we have hashtag free the P that came up in chat. That was a good one. Um, yeah, the David's question about if you can drink a water elemental. That was good. <laughs> the cow gloves. Oh my God. <laughs> that was uh, oh, yep. 100% my that. favorite moment. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So many I good enjoyed, ones. I uh, I enjoy any time Bees does his preaching, <laughs> like his preacher character. Mm -hmm. That is that that just drives me insane every time. Oh, my buddy Cyclone Jack just showed up in chat. <laughs> Jack was like one of my super earliest guests ever. <laughs> Jack, the chair test. The chair test. Those were great. <laughs> Um, Ben says I got my break on tails. I don't know if that's true. I think you would have gotten it either way, but that's, I think that's one of my favorite things is just like all the people that I got to introduce to other people through being on tails and like, um, getting to, uh, um, you know, like see where those connections took people like, um, I deliberately made sure that we got Jess Penley on when I had B. Dave Walters on. So, you know, like, let's make this a thing, you know? Um, but a lot of times, you know, especially when I would have guests come back on another time, I would be like, okay, this person and this person I think are going to go really well together. And then the next thing I know, they're like, yeah, we're starting a podcast together. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> well, when you introduced me to Ty with, and, uh, Aether and Steamworks has now become my absolute favorite thing in this world, so I have you to thank for that. I'm telling your girlfriend. <laughs> That's fair. Actually, uh, <laughs> both she and the little man are both listening right now, so shout out. I, to yes, I saw her in chat. <laughs> yep. They're both here. Somebody's just not old enough to uh, participate in Twitch chats yet. Yeah. <clears throat> M. M. <laughs> well, I know for, like, for this... Going on Tales has just been great to actually put faces to names. Because, I mean, we talk to each other on Twitter or these things all the time. But all of a sudden it's like, that's what Matt looks like. Like, yeah, <laughs> I finally can put a face to it. It's that's just kind of that's been excellent, too. Yeah, the few times I've been on, it was great to meet folks face to names. And I've actually made some really good friendships out of that. Yeah, I think, yeah. um you know like getting a little on the mushy side um uh, you know it definitely is like the really incredible friendships that i've made with people my treasure is the friendships i made along the way um you know but i just really did get the chance to meet some people that i consider my very best friends or get to know better some of the people that i now consider my my very best friends um met my significant other through doing tales from the tavern you know like Never would have happened if I hadn't started doing it. So <laughs> that was a, that was definitely a, that was definitely a highlight. So, um, okay. Um, just a reminder, we have a giveaway going on exclamation point enter. That's for an underground Oracle, um, bundle for anybody who's interested. Um, just want to make sure people remember that that's still going on. We haven't drawn a winner for that yet, but we will pretty soon. 
Um, Midwest Miniature Guy, I see you're asking my question next. So, um, and it's a good question. For those that aren't in the know, why is Tales from the Tavern ending? Um, it's really just a time thing at this point. Um, I've been doing Tales for three years. Um, this is episode 119. And it's a lot of work every week between the editing, the booking of guests, the time, like, for the actual stream itself, uh, you know, all of that stuff. And and I'm only one person. <laughs> um, you know, I pretty much run it completely by myself other than the moderators who pitch in, you know, to help out with stuff like this or, you know, handle small, you know, issues here and there that crop up. But uh, um it's, it's really just become a time thing at this point. Um, my kiddo's getting a little older and, you know, needs rides everywhere and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's really pretty much it. Although I'm not going to lie, I'm really kind of excited to get my Sunday nights back <laughs> because a, a lot of my weeks, like everything revolves around... Um, okay, I've got to be home by six o'clock on Sundays because I've got to make dinner and <laughs> make sure that the stream's all set up and I'm kind of excited to not have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> um, so that's it. That's why. So now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Um, Lord Richter asked another, ask my question next. Who is the most memorable person you have met through Tales from the Tavern? So I will open that up to anybody who's been on before, too. Oh. Way Luna. too many. <laughs> I don't count. Yeah, I, I, actually, yes, you do. You <laughs> since, yep. since, since, figure, since finding out what Tails was and being introduced to you, you, you have basically become my personal therapist. This, okay, that's true. That part's true. <laughs> I mean, I met Mark Mir, but if it's got to go with like who has um, had a bigger impact on on me in general, I gotta go with Dan. And I'm gonna be the actually same and say Matt <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, going through yeah. it, it has been Matt. Yeah, I know I've I've talked to uh, him a bit before, but I think here was when I really got to meet David Tilstra. Yeah, and. That has just been amazing. So, uh, got to give kudos to that and thanks for that. I'm just going to have to say it. Bees! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I've been lucky enough. I had Mark Muir on this year. I had B. Dave Walters on this year. Um, but in terms of people who, you know, really have become like, friends and people that I interact with regularly um you know I, Matt obviously um you know Matt and I chat a lot uh um star <laughs> um wolf's blood um you know uh I'm trying to think man Shannon David bees like I mean everybody in their own way really is is memorable because there's a lot of times like somebody will be like oh yeah so and so on Twitter and I'm like oh yeah I had them as a guest so it, there's a lot of people that even though I may not interact with them regularly, I still remember having them as a guest at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, everybody, everybody left their mark in their own way. <laughs> That's my Aww. diplomatic answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Joel LeBaker, uh, LeBaker in, in chat just said, in a way they're all winners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But gun to your head. Who is your favorite? Yeah. Luna, Mark who's your favorite? Fence. Mark Mir. Off the fence. <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation. I mean, no, can, can you really blame that answer? Can you really? <laughs> I think that's the real answer. Yeah, Commander Shepard, yeah, we're all toast. It's not a wrong answer either. <laughs> no. no. We do know that uh, the show is the uh, favorite of Commander Shepard. Yes. So. Yep. Yes, it is N7 approved. <laughs> Um, all right, let's see. We should probably draw a winner for that giveaway, huh? Probably should. Ooh. That's a grand idea. All right, so I'm going to close the entries. Last minute. Ready, set, go. All right. Pick a winner. Vertrox Nightblood is the winner. Yay, Vertrox. Um, so, Vertrox, you uh, will need to talk with Jess Penley. Um, just let her know that uh, you won the giveaway for tonight. Um yeah i know um 
And uh, yeah, just let her know you ran the, um, yeah, the giveaway. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, we should start another giveaway at the same time too. Uh, let's see. All right. So this one is going to be for a dozen cookies from Critical Hit Cookies of your choice. Ooh. However, the caveat is that you must be in the U.S. in order to enter because she cannot ship overseas or... She could ship to Canada, but it's wicked expensive, and so that part would not be free. <laughs> um, so U.S. only, um, but we're going to start that giveaway. Exclamation point, enter for a dozen cookies from Critical Hit Cookies. Uh, winner's choice. Um, they're amazing. If you have never tried them, you absolutely should. If you're going to be at PAX Unplugged, you can actually order some to get from her at PAX. Like, she'll deliver them to you at PAX. Um, if you're ordering some... Uh, Luna 10 at checkout will get you 10% off your order. So that's cool. Um, yeah, all that good stuff. All right. Should we do another hot sauce? Cookies. Yeah. I think we should do another hot sauce. Yeah, we could use a little bit more spice in our life. <laughs> this is the one that I'm genuinely worried about. It's just it's just so spicy. I, I wouldn't uh, worry too thanks, much. Thanks, Star. Thanks a lot. This is the pumpkin Thank one. you. Like, like check blood can yeah, handle exactly. it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not. It's not the fact that it's spicy is the problem here. Is the fact that it's pumpkin. Yeah. Oh. So it is a little pumpkiny, which is strange because it is. My outback is burning straight from Australia. We are going to see just how burny our outbats can get. So, in fairness, I'm going to put this one on, instead of on candy corn, I'm putting it on, uh, I actually have a pack of the autumn mix, so I'm putting it on a pumpkin. Oh, that's smart. More oh, surface area. area. Yeah. Ooh! Okay, that was genuinely not as bad as I expected. Mm-mm. A sharp, sharp peak at the front. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mel is out there towards the, front, the back. I'm not... It yeah. sure does. I like that one. <laughs> No one's sweating yet. It's, I actually no, like, it that one. I like that one. I like all these so far. That first one was so good. I'm going to put that on yep. everything. That's how I ended up discovering that I really like the uh, peri peri sauce, was when I did the last hot sauce one. I need more of that. Yep, that was pretty good. Luna would oh, it's got it's got some on that it's, one. It, it, yeah, it's you're getting that time right here, <laughs> yep. right here, right there. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Is it warm? It linger. It's warm. Okay. Oh, it's not it's warm. It's just it's got a nice little hang time that hits right back the yep. there. That's yeah. a nice aftertaste. I like that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. So I was All like, right. yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> tasty. Oh my gosh, David just said I still order most of the hot sauces you had on the last one. It's the Antarctic one, Antarctica one, isn't it, David? That's the one you like the best. Ass in Antarctica. For anybody who didn't see that, we about all died when we ate that one. Like we literally couldn't talk. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it was really, really bad. Yep. Yeah. It was it was very uncomfortable. Um Yeah. <laughs> oh god all right so yeah mara um, did actually love that one though that was the weird part y'all were dying she was like oh my god it's so good <laughs> <laughs> um all right so uh scry society nick has a question um and ask my question next and i really like this this question if you had one piece of advice to impart to someone listening to this final episode about how to be a better ttrpg player or gm what would it be Actively listen, I would say. Actively listen and don't think of how you're going to respond until where you're at and live in the moment, if you can. I would say that is some of the best role-playing, improv, being a player and DMing I have ever done. You just don't think about it. Just go with it, and you can actually make an audience cry with some of that stuff if you're uh, on your game. I need to get better at that. That is excellent advice. <laughs> Dan has made me cry multiple times on his games. <laughs> as far as being a player goes, failing a dice roll is not always a bad thing. Don't be afraid to fail a dice roll because some of the most fun that you could have comes 
from failing a dice roll and having to pick yourself up and figure out what to do after that. As far as a GM goes, you're not against everybody. Don't try to be against everybody. You're working together. I've seen way too many GMs just be, just try to be, oh, I'm the GM. It's my say so. Like all the TTRPG t shirts you see. And it's just not that way. I guess advice that I would give is, and this is not necessarily, you know, straightforward, but it's not about you. If you are the dungeon master, it is not your story that you are telling, that you're guiding three people through. You are creating a story for your players, for them to create. If you are a player, it's not about you. Don't sit in the spotlight. Try and give the other players spotlight and help them with their characters. They will do the same for you. And it just creates a better story because you're working together rather than like what Dan said is waiting for your response, waiting for the thing you're going to do, wait for the next thing. It's what can I do to help that character have a moment and then we create something together. Absolutely. Um, I don't really have player advice because I, I don't consider myself a very good player. I just kind of do it. But as far as being a GM, the thing that I like to see and I like to do and encourage is that you go bigger than most people expect. And when you are able to set a high bar that lets people know that they can, that, 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 let, that players are able to test high limits, you're going to make a lot of memories because people just get really out of the box. Wild things start to happen and the dice can just take you places you didn't expect. So yeah, just, just make the games you always wanted to play and uh, make your own limits, but push them way out there. Three words. Play for fun. Yeah. That's the reason why you got to the table. Play for fun. I would add one more thing just as a DM to players, as a way that players can be better. Check in with me. Make sure I'm doing okay. <laughs> um, we talk a lot about GMs. Make sure your players are care comfortable. Make sure your players are getting their moments. Make sure you're not going over your players' boundaries. Make sure you're doing the same for your GM. We have to play the bad guy, which can sometimes be really uncomfortable for us. <laughs> I have to be that gross person. Check in with me from time to time. <laughs> mm. That's yeah. That's really good advice. Or you get called up to be that gross person for an interstitial on somebody's podcast. Yeah. I couldn't even listen to that one. I'm sorry, Wolfie. I had to skip oh, that no. episode. There is a reason why that has a large disclaimer at the beginning. Yeah. So I have one other piece of advice. Loaded dice are perfect for if you're rolling. That's a joke. <laughs> I didn't even realize I could do that. Just don't get caught. <laughs> it's not against the rules if you don't get caught. I think some of my best role playing has because has come because of a failed dice roll, though. Mm hmm. Ones can be as fun as twenties. You just got to play it right. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And so DMs make ones fun. Players make your make your ones interesting. Describe it. I will say some of the best roleplay moments I've ever had in games is from failures. Or setbacks, shall we call them. Not necessarily a failure. Yes. Yeah, I think I was in one of your games and I failed to roll and I got thrown out a window. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> it oh, very well yeah. might have been. <laughs> Oh, you, oh yeah, no, the one I really remember for you, though, was the one that Lamar did with Put It Back. Which you part the of that? Yeah. Oh, the entire thing. It was just an errand of mistake oh, yeah. after mistake. Yeah. But that was yeah. fantastic. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm pretty sure uh, Jay got a one during the Agents of Nyx campaign, and I was just so happy standing next to the monster, as monks do, and I just got cro crossfire. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was fantastic. That's when you were fighting your shadow selves. As I, I was, yeah. <laughs> Worked. All right. Um, let's see. I gotta jump around because some of the questions are. Let's see. Okay. Um, 
Mimics and Misfits, the rest of us know as gum. Uh, how did you find Luna and what's a fun, fun memory you have of her? I need to read these questions before I just start reading them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to know the answer to this. <laughs> My favorite memory of Luna. Oh, Lord. Here did... comes the essay. <laughs> <laughs> what I did over my summer vacation. To keep it under Welcome to out. my TED Talk. <laughs> it wasn't summer vacation. It was earlier this year. Oh my god. And I finally made my way up to New England. I was there to, of course, see Mara. That was the reason why I was really there. But, got some time to go meet Luna face to face. And a couple of others. But, uh, it was... We were hanging out in front of the uh, restaurant, and at that point, uh, it was me and Mara. And uh, I look up, and I'm waiting for Luna to get to the restaurant, and I happen to see her from a couple of blocks down the road. Uh, if you guys can't tell, I have a bit of a voice, and I have a bit of a way of making my voice carry. And we're in a small, older New England town with small streets, tall buildings, lots of echoes. <laughs> and from a couple of blocks away, at the top of my lungs that I could possibly get, I just screamed out, Luna. He did. And it I was do so think that loud. everyone... <laughs> <laughs> she... First of all, I'm not even sure if you knew where I was when I first No, because it. it was you echoing off the around. buildings. <laughs> <laughs> it came from everywhere. <laughs> And uh, I will never forget the fact that your face went from to, oh my God, in bright red <laughs> in about two and a half seconds. Yeah. <laughs> if only you knew, though, that the thought process was, did someone just hit a dog <laughs> with a car? <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized it was you. <laughs> yeah, that's like the new version of Perk yelling con right there. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. And then the funnier thing was when he turned around and did the exact same thing to Atomic Zero. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought I thought he was going to walk away. I, <laughs> I really thought we lost Brian at that point. Uh, that was fun. Well, for me, I met Luna before I came on Tales from the Tavern. I actually met you oh, late twenty. 19, I think it was just before the pandemic. Yeah. It's when I kind of started Twitter and all that stuff. Um, and we started the, we started a, a little group called Balls, the badass, lovely lady squad. <laughs> and it was just a, a bunch of uh, the Twitter ladies that had just wanted to chat with each other and start playing games. And that snowballed into a, a bunch of people being in it and coming and going. But we've had a, a lot of conversations and through that, Luna has very much supported me and encouraged me to essentially do what I want to do to get out there and DM to get out there and make things. And Luna has been extremely, extremely supportive. So I I'm a little sad this is going to end just simply because people some people are going to miss out on that support that Luna has given to so many people. Aww. I mean, I'll still be around on Twitter like I of can course. give it out there, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that was fun. The the badass lovely lady squad. The badass lovely lady squad. <laughs> I met Luna when she was doing Tales from the Tavern on the other channel, and joined the Discord soon after that. I think one of our other no, one of the other members of the community introduced me to Tales from the Tavern, and like I said, soon joined the Discord after that. And then afterwards, Luna effectively became my personal therapist. Um, but I think my favorite moment of Luna's actually has to do with this bag right here. Oh, yeah! <laughs> that was a custom... How many weeks? A lot. Way too many. That How was many a custom weeks? dice bag that I knit for, for Rain. But you, even though you were so busy, you, you never did forget to like update me and whatnot and i wouldn't even have to ask but it was it's so nice i still use it to this day and anytime i play DD or i dm blades in the dark it's like here's my bag 
Yeah, I like that bag. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> I do too. Oh. Um, <laughs> I met I, I met Luna when I was coming up in TTRPG Twitter, and uh, it was Tales was the first non-game stream I'd ever been a part of. And back then, I was just super timid. I didn't know what I was doing. I just kind of like popped out of things. And it's like, yeah, we're gonna ask questions. I'm like, just sweating the whole time because I just I don't know. I'm not good at that stuff. So yeah, and, and since then, Tales has sort of like become like for me like home base, like a rock. It's something like I just always just knowing that it was there doing great things and stuff like that and helping people. And um, it's like, I don't know. It was like, a, it was like a beacon and I liked it. And I, I got to meet people there and yeah, that first time that was, it made me know that the community was real, really for me. And uh, that there were real people that were cool. That's what it, that's, and that's kind of like why I stuck around. So, <laughs> so this is all your fault. Oh, damn it. <laughs> we finally have a scapegoat. That's it. I'm leaving. <laughs> Shutting it down. Oh, no. What have we done? <laughs> so, yeah, I think like Matt, I met Luna just as I was getting kind of involved in the scene. And then I happened to run a D&D Beyond contest and Luna won uh, Van Richten's guide to... Ravenloft, and then it's like, hey, well, I've got you. Want to be on my live stream? Sure! <laughs> <laughs> and that led us to the shenanigans of about a year ago when we did the candy corn, and here yeah. we are again. No, <laughs> but it's fun. We, we've commented and we've joked all over Twitter, and it's been fun. The love of the puns that I post occasionally has been a uh, very well received on my end. I always could use more pen support, so Luna has always been that, and I think heartedly chuckled or booed maybe sometimes both <laughs> usually at the same time yeah <laughs> i'm like oh boo that was bad um uh yeah i i think one of my favorite things um dan was the time we were just talking about it before we went live when we had a like a really quiet group from chat one night and so you and i just doled out really bad D, &D yes. puns for like 20 minutes we were like we're gonna keep was, going until people start asking questions yep. and then that i think fun. people just were like yeah no actually we could keep going with this <laughs> yeah and then i think some of the chat actually dropped some amazing yeah. puns as well yep so yeah. that's actually the night where i discovered one of the best D, D puns i've got which i will drop now because here we are here we are uh what do you call a dragon that eats an adventuring party a party pooper <laughs> i love that one <laughs> <laughs> Feed me your pain and tears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very good. That's oh, funny. No. Yeah, yeah. Patch Tails kickstarted the joke about him winning so many giveaways, which is not a lie. That's well earned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chat's like, I just took psychic damage. I really want to win this next one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I went back to that Rio sauce. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to have to cook more nuggets on break because I've just been sitting here snacking on the sauces the entire time. I know. So Star we, and I were just saying in chat, like, we can't stop eating the candy corn. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm going to be so sick after this. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you've got to have it in little bags where you can pace it. I know, that's yeah, my problem. I have, like, one bag. big normal size bag. Well, okay, in my defense, I've also got, like, 30 of them lined up here in front of me, so I <laughs> it's portion control. So I've got so, to ask, on the next hot sauce, are you just going to open one of the bags, pour the hot sauce in, shake, shake it up? It shake it up. And shake oh, it yeah, No, no, no. I, I, what, I'm in the process of figuring out the best hot sauce before I do that. <laughs> Mix them all the together. Hottest man. One. The hottest one. The oh. hottest one. So are we due for another shot now that we brought it up? We can. Yes. We've only got three yeah. left, so. Oh, I think we could go ahead and head down to Cuba for our next one. Oh, boy. 
This, this has one's a, green, guys. Yes, it's yeah. a wonderful uh, tomatillo base, if Ooh. I am not mistaken. Shake it up good. It's a spicy well, citrus. That's what I'm planning. This thing is super tasty. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Very we'll go with that. My sinus is ready for this. Oh yeah, that's great. I'm gonna breathe. I'm gonna be able to breathe forever Thank now you. after doing all these hot Thank sauce challenges. All right, there we go. Up here. Oh, oh boy. Mm. Ooh. That is so oh, that's good. excellent. Oh, that's, that's good. That is excellent. That one's not bad. Yeah, don't chug this one. Save this one. Oh yeah, yeah. Holy Ooh, smokes, good. While we're talking about hot sauces, I also would like to shout out that we have gotten two donations um, for Extra Life. Uh, we got one from an anonymous uh, donor and one from Orcrist. So thank you very much for your donations. We appreciate that very much. I'm doing Star's Nugget now. <laughs> <laughs> Eating Wolf's candy. <laughs> All right. That one didn't really seem that hot at all. Yeah, I didn't you know, that actually, that, one. that no. was actually maybe the mildest of the three we've done so far. Yeah, it was like, mm -hmm. it was spicy, but it wasn't like as spicy. It wasn't, and it wasn't like right up front either. No. <laughs> Although, it was spicy, but it wasn't hot. Two. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's a sharpness to it, but it fades quick. Yeah. It you does. hit the eye of the storm is what you're saying? <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good though. Good. It's really it good. Uh, all right. Let's go in a sandwich tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Made out yeah, of candy. I, I would eat that one very happily. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, Luna, I have an important question for you. Okay. Where did you get that amazing crown? My amazing crown actually came from uh, the Renaissance Fair that I went to this fall. So... I got it from one of the vendors at the Renaissance Fair. It was one of those things that had been sort of an ongoing joke with me and my daughter that every year I kept threatening that I was going to buy myself a crown. And um, finally this year I sucked it up and bought two. So <laughs> there you go. So Perfect. yeah, so I have that one and I have I have my little floral crown. Oh, oh cool. Excellent. Yeah. So that's my, my little floral crown. Um, and uh yeah so that's that's where i got that the uh, i say local but like it's local as in two and a half hours away local <laughs> renaissance uh, fair. that's local for renaissance fair it is in new england <laughs> <laughs> um, because as any great queen will tell you what's better than one crown two crowns yeah oh, i thought the answer was five crowns i don't <laughs> know how to count <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I did, I got that, um, and then I also, I had a, he was hanging out on my shoulder, but I think it must be, like, bedtime for my little guy, so, um, but yeah, this is Zed, he likes to hang out on my shoulder. Very cool. Yeah, there he is, so, yeah, he was hanging out with me earlier, but he was, he was napping, he was tired, so he fell over and fell asleep. <laughs> um... All right. Well, I think this is probably a great time for us to pause and take a break. However, chat, um, stick around uh, because during the break, uh, instead of your normal break screen, I have uh, a 2022 highlight reel that has been put together so far. Um, so if you want to see David Tilstra break his chair <laughs> um, or anything like that, um, the gloves that we referenced earlier, that's in there. Gloves. So there's some good stuff. So, um, so go ahead and do that. We will uh, be around um, for the second half in just a few minutes. We've got a bunch of questions that we haven't gotten to yet. I need to go get another drink of water. And uh, we need to hashtag free the pee and all that good stuff. So we will be back in just a few minutes and we'll see you after the break. Free the pee! <laughs> We've had a lot of fun at Tales from the Tavern over the years, haven't we? Let's take a quick look at some of the 2022 highlights. A little triggered, because, y'all, the gelatinous cube is supposed to clean a dungeon. And you're going to go through a dungeon smelling like tomato or orange or, or strawberry? I'm going for mint. Pure... <laughs> winter fresh blast that thing is going to go through each corridor you're going to go in there it's going to be spearmint hitting your senses hard 
That's I that's you were to like say it. That they were set a fruit, them, and I was like, we eat shrimp. No, no, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. that's not it. It's it cleans. It's a little. It's a Roomba. It's a see-through Roomba that just goes through. If a Roomba was tomato flavored, we'd be eating them. No. Oh my god, I <laughs> can't. True. I can't. That's Don't true. follow the dogs her and cats would be less afraid. <laughs> Or more. <laughs> My cats would try to eat them. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe they're delicious. Oh, yeah. Least... Improv is definitely a skill to develop. Not, what do you got to say? Oh, I was going to play off of what you were just saying there. Have you seen the vets when they have to birth a calf? They got the glove that goes up to here. Have a couple mm. of those handy as a, as a uh, DM. You'll yeah. know. Oh, oh, it, it, oh no, he lives this in the entire conversation. This took a turn I did not expect. <laughs> no, no, I apologize. <laughs> this one here is improv, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you got me good. Oh, you got me so good. Um, Bose Bailey in chat just asked, How do you help a player become more comfortable actually acting as their character if they're not the acting type? Well, gotta say. Props are useful. I <laughs> <laughs> actually put it on this time. <laughs> yep. Right there, fellas. I'm having Amazing. bad visions, dude. Like, no. Amazing. Put your character on just like that glove. I will need a mind erase after this one. <laughs> uh, I will need a mind Where's my, where's my men blank. in black flashy thingy? Um... <laughs> I'm Commander Shepard. And Tales from the Tavern is my favorite stream on Twitch. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, and, and of course, I should go. Yes! I'm so excited. <laughs> Life is made. Right? That's I know. it. Everybody's Life like, Cat, could you please ask for those? <laughs> it doesn't matter uh, how right you uh, think you are. <laughs> if the rest of the party is going to do the the bad thing, you, ha you, you, you have to let them. Because you can't stop them. <laughs> Uh, real life applications. I would well. I mean, the very valuable rule that D and D teaches us is always have fifty feet of rope with you and a ten foot pole. <laughs> Man, that's you right. I gotta go repack that rope into my yep. bag before tomorrow. <laughs> you, can't, you can't die by being clubbed in the head. It's only like three hit points. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, that's... <laughs> yeah, a, if you're being held up with a knife, that it's only one d4 damage. It's not that much. It's not, yeah, but yeah. the problem is we're all zero oh, level. Pez yeah, exactly. Everyone is zero level. Peasants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're what, all commoners. A, a, a d4 minus one or something like that, or d, mm. d4 minus two HP or whatever it was. <laughs> uh, around for a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, and the one thing that I would say fifth edition in particular is. Uh, has has as an advantage is its accessibility. Mm -hmm. Now we all know that all you know Dungeons and Dragons is more popular now than it was even at its height in the 80s. Uh and I think the accessibility of the 5th edition rules have a lot to do with that because it's very easy for new players to start and that just you know grows the popularity of the game. You've got lots of people playing it. Uh and ultimately yeah, so they you know leaps and bounds, leaps and bounds. And certainly in terms of societal acceptance, let's face it, <laughs> Dungeons & Dragons has, again, come a long way in those terms as well. I lived through the height of the sat satanic panic. Like, that's when I was playing. That's, you know, briefly having my Dungeons & Dragons books like, oh, I don't know. We'll put this away with all this heavy metal music as well. So, you know, because <laughs> that was also under assault. So, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. <laughs> a dungeon cleanup crew. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what a gelatinous cube is for? Oh, so is it, is I guess okay. a gelatinous Just send them in. <laughs> yeah, let's just send them in. I Glad had someone literally, legitimately call it a dungeon Roomba one week. Yeah. I mean, they're not wrong. <laughs> they're yeah, really I mean, not. It's just a big old dungeon Roomba. So, hey, Wolfblood uh, and Luna, y'all used to play uh, 3.5, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so there is this book called the book of you know oh, erotic oh, fantasy no. yeah! where one could use a set of <laughs> <laughs> there they go <laughs> there it is there it is i know exactly what you're talking about i love you <laughs> that was like the perfect question to start off tonight with Good. dear god i hate you all <laughs> <laughs> i told you you're stopping me <laughs> uh, jen you have to do it as a rice ball. 
Okay, hold on. <laughs> you have to tell me twice. Ready? I got, I got best this. plan. I got this. I All right. Prove of this. So, wait. Did it freeze? Where'd it go? What happened? Mm. There no, it is. There, it is. there you there go. Is. There it is. There it is. Okay. Okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I am Jen. <laughs> These are the type of chaotic uh, shenanigans you can find on my stream. I'm Young Olsen Chat, by the way. Um, <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter at Jen Geeky. I have stuff coming up, but I don't really know what it is because I just say yes to things. So pay <laughs> attention to my Twitter. Like, <laughs> It's it's what? a well-known fact. Big numbers make serotonin go and Into a room. Hey, there's a sarco- Also, ironically, my centaur. Um, Hey, there's a sarcophagus in here. None of us are strong enough to open it. Uh, rolled a strength check, was able to open it. Open it, out pops a vampire who casts Slay Living, and now my centaur is dead. <laughs> so that was a thing that happened. It, did he keep hitting the centaur? <laughs> like, when it fell down, did he keep hitting it? <laughs> no, I don't think so. That's good, because you never want to beat a dead horse. <laughs> yeah. oh. I hate you so much right now. I was like, this is going somewhere, and I don't want to yeah, know where it's going. There's, there's a punchline coming any second yep. now. Uh, sorry. You just <laughs> couldn't resist, <laughs> could you? I couldn't. No. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I it. Oh, yeah. Is that some spells, but like some Good. It will overpower oh. any condiment you put Incredible. in. Incredible! So don't bother like doing that. I broke my stool because I'm fat. <laughs> no, <laughs> your table stool. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> I super broke my stool. So we'd like to uh, change the charity over to the uh, surgery fund to get that <laughs> chair <laughs> to get that chair removed from David's anus. <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> okay. When's your next? When's your next streaming content going up? Uh, next when? Sunday at the same time. So it. All would right. Be... If by if by the end of next week's episode you've raised over two thousand, I'll run D and D for all y'all. Oh! Okay. You heard it. In ch- you heard it right now. There you go. No, I'm about to tell wait, my wait, hold right on, now. hold on. Where's Where's like Lord Richter? Lord Richter. That's a, that's a yeah, week. Right? You, you did sixteen hundred in three days. That's a week. <laughs> For four hundred more dollars, if you if we get chat, over the line, chat, I'll do it. Chat. I have a superstition about dice to make them roll well. It's PG thirteen. That's fine. Uh, We're eighteen okay. plus here. Okay, and I swear it works. It works for everyone who does it. It's it's been experimented time and time again. Everybody was dice in front of you. Give them a rub in your nips and then roll <laughs> oh. it. I, I was just about to you. Do- <laughs> it will be a better roll than you thought. Unless everyone rolls a one right now, in which case, I was just I am about to completely go. wrong. Is it, I want to go is it better when it's cold or warm outside? Does that affect it? <laughs> it's it you tell the weather. It's science. We we don't know the answers. We have to write the the results down. So if it's cold and the the results are bad, you tell me. If they're good, you I'm tell me. I'm, I'm cataloging warm. it. Moderately warm in here. Yes. I got a three. So I don't know. Oh, <laughs> there you go. All right. Let's I got a nine. A... I got so a nine. Is it, nine. is it warm or cold? It was cold. The dice was cold. I was warm. Okay, so maybe we can't be warm when this happens. That's the lesson. <laughs> That's okay. the lesson. We're I'm, learning, I'm people. We're learning. I mean, dice sorry, does Lauren, have ice right I swear to God, it usually works. Uh, believe you. Oh really my do. God. I got that a 20. Makes too much sense. Oh, did you really? <laughs> I got a nat 20, yeah. Dang. And I'm cold. <laughs> It's science! Where's the Ron Burgundy gift? Somebody put it somewhere. Nice like um, ice. Oh my gosh, it's making too much sense. But anyway, that's... Yes, thank you everyone for helping with that experiment. Now we know. And now this do. is an educational stream. <laughs> it's PG-13. Sorry, everybody. That was... So, we meet at last. You... Who have taken it upon yourself to take all the tacos from the bell and take them away from me. My plans for these tacos from the bell will not be stopped by the likes of you. For as you see, you forgot about the burritos. 
The burritos are more powerful than the tacos. And with the power of the burrito, <laughs> I will reign supreme. But that is the next type of taco <laughs> in my arsenal. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it for right. For uh, right uh, sir, <laughs> sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> no, no, my old nemesis, Wendy. We're just gonna come back live. Wolf Split's not even here. Like, I don't even know what's happening. I've lost control of the green room. Something about surrogate nipples. I don't even know. <laughs> oh, so I hope you all enjoyed the highlight reel. Uh, I had a ton of fun putting it all together. Um, it was uh, it was a good time, and um, yeah, I, I know, <laughs> David. That Wendy's comment got me. <laughs> That's what broke me too. That's what broke me too. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I was uh, in for the surrogate good. nipples conversation, but the Wendy Wendy's, that's what broke me. Right? I know. <laughs> and I cannot, I cannot watch that clip of David with his chair breaking without, like, dying of laughter. Like, you just can't. <laughs> it's it pretty fantastic. Mm-hmm. And yep. we're all glad that he survived. Yep. Yeah. And then, or, or Chris just said, now I'm going to have to ask Lauren if her dice method is still holding up. So, Yep. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, let's get back into the questions. Um, where are we? Okay. So this one comes from Jason and Jason would like to know if you started a classic TV sitcom based on your campaign or PC, what would it be called? Or what classic TV actor would star in it? Or hum the theme song. <laughs> oh. Well, Wackety Sax is already copyrighted. So you can't go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a go-to title I go with a lot of this. It would just be Adventures in Middle Damagement. It would just be a poor person just trying to DM as best they can, but just gosh darn it, they can't do it. And it's just hilarious episodes in week in, week out with rotating guest stars. That's amazing. I, and I'd probably be played by Alton Brown. <laughs> hey. Yes. I'm here for that show. I would I watch the heck out of that. Yep. If it was the outclass and outcast game, it would definitely just be called emotional damage because that's pretty much what we're throwing out every single time we go. But if it was my home game, it would be uh, a cluster of fucks because that is <laughs> definitely all that happens. <laughs> oh, my gosh. oh, you know what I just thought of? Sorry, guys. We need to draw a winner oh, for yeah. our cookie oh, giveaway. There we go. Yep, that's a thing. I just thought of that. I was like, oh, wait, we have more giveaways to do, and we should probably do them before the end of the show. I'm going to close the entries for cookies. And we're going to pick a winner. Drum roll, cookies, please. Cookies, 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 cookies. Todd Moonbounce. Yay. Um, Todd, I will get you in touch uh, with Carrie from Critical Hit Cookies. And um, <laughs> we need to draw a winner. Could totally be an 80s sitcom. I mean, you're not yep. wrong. <laughs> Um, it does. It sounds like a game show. Yeah. Um, an 80s. Oh, it's an 80s comedy about a game show. I like that even better. Yes. <laughs> it's like, you know, like The Office, but about running a game show. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, Todd, I'll get you in touch with Carrie. Um, but any, any of the cookies of your choice, you get a dozen of them and uh, all that good stuff. So enjoy. They are delicious. I guarantee it. You will not be sad. Um, let's do another giveaway because we have more and we need to give stuff away. So the next giveaway that we have is, um, a custom ornament, f uh, from Arcane Spectacles. So star is going to show one off. That's what it looks like. If you can see it, you can have, I, I think it's it. up to seven okay. names put on it. Yep. So you can do like your party, you can do your family, you can do however you want to work it out, but that's how it works. I have one with my name, my kiddo's name and our two cats name on that goes on our Christmas tree. So um, start that giveaway exclamation point enter. If you would like to enter to win a custom uh, ornament, they make great gifts for your DM for other people in your party, all that good stuff. Um, okay, so there's that. Anyway, back to the questions. Classic sitcom. What would it be called? All that stuff. Uh, for me, it'd be uh, based on my 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 home world 
game, I guess the sitcom would be called Top of the Order. And it would only take place inside the fast food chain restaurants that I have in my world that are called Gilberger. And oh you go gosh. there and you, you you order like a number four or whatever. But really, it's like it's, it's a, a joke that whenever a party comes in, whatever they say in there is just like cone of silence. It's the perfect meeting spot for everybody. And the food's just delicious. So, um, yeah, it's the safe spot. And I, I use it in every campaign. So it would be like if you could imagine a cast of people uh, watching random adventurers come in, talk about their stuff and then just leave. That's Idiot. glorious. I want That's this show great. now, like, so I do. bad. I would watch I that. Too. Mine is very similar to that. Uh, I would probably call it something like starting a tavern, and it's basically yours, the same idea as yours, but it, like, imagine Cheers. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, so this isn't a current game, but uh, I would say uh, something similar to Cheers, but it would be based on the Bengamins game that I played in. Um, Bengamins, uh, for anybody who didn't see that or isn't familiar with it, Bengamins is basically like this giant space arcade bowling alley. Um, and yeah, I could picture something kind of like Cheers, but happening at Bengamins. <laughs> I would have to bring in, I would have to have Dave. And we would probably have, <clears throat> it, it would be Dave and Busters. So, <laughs> except Dave is my insane gnome alchemist. So no matter what it is you order, with the best of intentions, you have no idea what you're going to get. And that is, it's the episodic sitcom where Dave makes something and things just freaking happen. <laughs> That also could be very entertaining. I just started playing a uh, Blades in the Dark game, and I don't know what it would be called, but I'm pretty sure the theme song would be like Mission Impossible, but played on out of tune kazoos. <laughs> Fair. So it's like the Titanic on the recorder yeah. type yeah. thing. <laughs> Trombone hero. <laughs> Trombone hero, yes. <laughs> That's terrifying. Yeah, like. I know that uh, I know that Blades in the Dark is generally like a more serious game, but it was literally we've only played one night. And uh, so it was really just like a getting to know you kind of like for the system because none of us have played it before. Well, that's not true. The the GM has played it before, but the rest of us are totally new to this. So we were like, um, yeah, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> but we had fun. You just run around and stab everybody, right? I mean, I used a grappling hook at one point, and I did so pretty successfully, so I guess that's a win. A grappling hook. Mm -hmm. We should all get grappling hooks. That sounds like a wonderful plan. I get to this hot sauce. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. Is it time for another hot sauce? Sure. I think it's time for another hot <clears throat> sauce. Because we could go south of the border for our Mexican-style hot sauce. Ooh. This one I absolutely love. It does have an ancho chili base. And uh, has a bit of a sneaky heat to it. So, Luna, please enjoy. Oh, God. What do we got here? It's delicious, though. This is, I think, my favorite one out of the batch. Oh, it smells? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's heavy chili. Yeah. Smoky. Oh, Whoa. It all over my desk. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good amount of smoke. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to do that again. Yeah, I'm actually going for a second one myself. On yeah, that we're going to do that one more time. I think that might be my favorite so far. Two. I made a mess with yeah, that one. It's all bad. over my He's desk. He's been tiny now. nugs. I'm going oh, for no. a third. Yeah, that yeah, smoking is really... That's good. Yeah, you can smell it, like... Big time. Like the scotches I drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's excellent. Holy smokes. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's delicious. Quite good. Very, very different than the other ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that one definitely is more of a grower. Yeah. Yeah. It's not right there in your face right up front, but it gets there. 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's who picked this pack. That was it's great. I was gonna say nice. I think Dan did. Yeah, yeah, it is good. Yeah, good yeah I went on Amazon and picked the first link that seemed to be the most reasonably priced. <laughs> there you go. The things we do for charity in the TTRPG community. <laughs> yeah, except I think we've all found a new hot sauce pack we'll be going back to. <laughs> right? No kidding. Oh, gosh. All right. Um, so next question. Uh, Lady of Toast would like to know favorite accents to do for different races. I suck at accents, so I don't do them. There's my answer. <laughs> All my dwarves have Bostonian accents. I refuse to do As a Scottish. As they should. Work. Everyone does one. I refuse to ever do it. I can't do Scottish. I just can't. It's I don't know. I can't do any of them. The best thing you'll get from me is once in a while I will switch to Minnesotan, and that's that's about that's about as far as we get. All gnomes speak Minnesotan for me, <laughs> which I love, by the way. I can't do accents, accents so it's oh, go ahead. No. Yeah, accents are a no go here. I have a southern accent, and I'm trying to get rid of that. So, yeah, best you get from me is a pitch tone where I can go higher, lower, or just real gruff. <laughs> so I'll be honest, I'd like to play my elves with like the backwoods down south accent. Because That's nobody awesome. ever does that with elves. So yeah. why not? So you've got an elf walking up to you. Well, I, I, I just don't know what's going on with y'all right now because y'all ain't thinking clear about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's some high magic that they got going on over there. Mm -hmm. and you, you don't want to be dabbling in that one. Mm -hmm. No, sir. I'm sorry, I'm just looking and seeing that both David Tilstra and Lord Richter are calling out a, a three of you now, who's the third? Our, <laughs> we did a charity game and I had Kuatoa in it, and I went for a straight Smeagol voice for him. So Kiri was gonna tell yeah. the god that they need to get eaten! <laughs> Very good. Perfect. I like You're that. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, I love they that. They made me sing in that voice too, that was difficult. Can we get some of that now? Oh, God. That's a $50 yeah, you... donation to Extra Life. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. $50 donation. <laughs> I will sing as Gary once more. Uh... <laughs> Star saved by the bell right there. <laughs> I just pulled up the uh, the Extra Life, ch you know, donations just in case. So. <laughs> <laughs> It was nothing special, but there was, they, uh, they had me, I made the mistake of saying, yeah, he's singing a song. You can hear it. And like, what does it sound like? I'm no. <laughs> so we actually had people donate for that one too. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I'm expecting to see a donation. <laughs> Especially uh, since Lord Richter is in the chat. I know it's true. <laughs> um, yes, yeah. but what song? I don't really ever do I don't really ever do voices or accents just because it's like I'm not great at them. Um, but uh, there was that game um, <laughs> when I talk about the combat wombat every now and then. My combat wombat. And uh, and that was um, Cornelius. And, and Cornelius tended to talk like this and and was very proper in how he spoke. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Cornelius. so but it was just. I liked it because it seemed like such the opposite of what a combat wombat would sound like. So, oh, Cornelius was fantastic. He also in my in my head canon wears a top hat and a monocle. So, yep. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, hold on, let me let me just make sure nobody donated for that. Nope, not yet. <laughs> just well, there's still time. Just We've still got 39 minutes left. If you all pull your resources, we can get that $50 donation. I mean, wouldn't it be more fun to make Wolf's Blood drink the hot sauce? <laughs> see why we can't, I don't see why we I'm can't sorry, why we can, yeah. while he... Yeah. Why not so? <laughs> Por que no las dos? <laughs> Give me another couple <laughs> minutes. Oh... Uh, <sighs> All right, uh, David Tilstra called up a question that uh, he wanted to bring back the classics for. Can you drink a water elemental? 
Yeah, but you're not going to survive. <laughs> I think that's the correct answer. Yeah. You're not going to like the result. You remember those oh, those players who were like, if I go inside the dragon, can I fight my way out? I feel like that's the same equivalence. <laughs> <laughs> Now, and now, hang on. Now, if you actually have a deal with the water elemental to just hang out and come out when you need it. Okay, there's a character idea forming here. <laughs> That's a heist idea right there. Uh-huh, yep. <laughs> I, I feel like this is like the crazy diet plan of the D&D &D world. Well, if you just drink a water elemental, it actually stays in your stomach and you're less hungry. Well, now, oh let's see, if you really want to commit, you need the earth elemental. <laughs> it's not paleo, it's primordial. Yes. <laughs> but it's not vegan. Uh, yeah, Lord Richter says like you're in hours. a desert and you take in the water elemental to save it. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> Just remember, fight the urge to pee. <laughs> Don't I'm just hashtag imagine free to pee. And that, yeah. Now I'm just imagining that this water elemental sounds like venom, and they're telling me, "Don't pee! Don't pee!" Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it Don't stings. Fight it. Don't fight it, because it's only gonna hurt, or it only burns when you PvP. <laughs> oh, That's it. I'm ending the stream now. <laughs> We had a good run. <laughs> yeah, that's the, we hit the lowest point of the stream. That's it. It's right there. We don't. You don't even get to see us finish the hot sauces. We don't do the last. That's it. No more giveaways. We're done. <laughs> that was the low point, not the surrogate nipples. No, no, that was no. That was, uh, if not, that was two high points. I will say. <laughs> we started up here and we went steadily downward ever since. Um, oh, oh, Star no. Shinobi. No. We have a donation of $50 from Lord Richter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yay. All right. <laughs> it wasn't a long song because this is not easy. But he went, <clears throat> so long and short, what was happening is the Kuatoa, if you guys don't know what Kuatoa do, Kuatoa, if they believe hard enough in something, it becomes a god. I love them for this. So these Kuatoa had stolen the scarecrows from the village and had turned one into a god. Ran into these guys, decided that he was going to bring them back to feed the scarecrow. <laughs> and one of them could read minds, so all they could hear was, Oh, 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 Oh my god, that's fantastic. That's amazing. amazing. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> I will never forgive you, Lord Richter. <laughs> fantastic. Now we can take bets on how long it takes somebody to clip that. Somebody just said, and that's my new ringtone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. I know Joel. He will turn that into his ringtone. Ah. <laughs> uh... I, I know what uh, what clip I'm going to finish out the 2022 highlight reel with. Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, I need more blues and more candy corn. <laughs> Take the edge off. Take the edge off. <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. Yep. Everyone says it's worth every cent. <laughs> oh, Dennis is overrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. This is why the best things come from charity streams. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, uh, you know what? We should uh, we should finish out the giveaway so I can end with the last giveaway that we have. So, uh, last call, exclamation point, enter if you would like to get in for an ornament from Arcane Spectacles. Um, mm, it looks like that. But you can customize it with any names that you want, up to seven names. So, yep. They're really legible. You can put like party names on the bottom. It's it's great. Yeah, they're super nice. And, it, you know, it'll say like our party on it if you want to. And you can put the year or whatever. So, um, yeah. All right. I am going to close the entries. And heck, you could even have a TPK on there of all the players that died on your watch. <laughs> I think yeah. I saw Shannon post on Twitter today that she did one with all of her characters. Yeah. So, all right. Drawing a winner. Vertrox, you already won something. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, Keone. Good to see you. Oh goodness. All right. Vertrox, would you would you like it or would you like to pass on to the next winner? <laughs> I will let you uh, let you decide. I'm. Let's see. Pass it on. All right. So we'll draw another winner. Paragon option. Dark Happiness Both one one two. You are the winner. So feel free to reach out to me um, either in a. Um, uh, Twitch whisper or on discord or on uh, Twitter whatever is the easiest way to get in touch with me and uh, we will get that all squared away for you cool all right one more giveaway to finish up and this one is for a $30 gift card to gemmed firefly courtesy Thank of you, star shinobi <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yes, uh, exclamation point enter. If you would like to enter to win a $30 gift card to Matt's shop, uh, gemmed firefly. And, um, if you, if you didn't see, so, uh, Wolf's blood is wearing one of Matt's shirts. Dan's wearing one of Matt's shirts. I have like four in my closet and one in my bureau. Three. And <laughs> oh, I bought one for my GM that says cult leader. There you go. I'm going to pour that one that. tonight. <laughs> 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 I need something witchy though. So I went with the. Uh... I want the classic. I know, I like oh, nice. that. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Love it. Oh, I should have done crying as a free action for the hot sauce. Oh. <laughs> Darn it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you're not familiar too, Matt's shop also has like mugs and um, I got a, a one of those. Yes. Yeah. And I got a, a like a, one of those things called like a welcome mat. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as a housewarming present for someone. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. I can make more blankets. Blankets yeah, are fun. Yeah, you do need more blankets. Get on that. <laughs> I vote blankets. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, you Hello should. this week. All right. So let's see. The next question that we have comes from... Uh, I always butcher this name, and I'm super sorry. Uh, uh, Lorcalon, if you could go back in time to meet yourself... Rain knows what question's coming... Uh, yeah, I just, do. Absolutely. I just do. before your first episode, what advice would you give yourself? <laughs> well, I don't mind starting this one off. <laughs> for those of you who have been around Tales from the Tavern for a long time, you will know that my very first episode on this show, I passed out at the desk right midstream in a low blood pressure incident, uh, just passed directly out cold. Thankfully, I was disconnected from the call at that exact same time. So what would I go back and tell myself for the first stream? Eat something, you fool. <laughs> Don't pass out on the stream. Thankfully, you had a friend that was watching that was able to go over and check on you. <laughs> yes. That was so scary. I know. We, we were, were like, so worried about you. Yeah. Hope they're okay. Uh, they're just gone. <laughs> Oh, I, still, I, could have, give myself... I still have not watched that stream back. <laughs> <laughs> Best advice? Yes. Ask that question about arm length latex gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I forgot about that. That became a really good long running gag. <laughs> Keone's in chat. Oh, no, not that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Keone yes, was on that, that episode, too. <laughs> Looked up <sighs> better puns. Yeah. Oh, um, let's see. God, that was three years ago. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um I think for me, it would, and not as funny, but mine would be don't belittle yourself. Because when I came on, all I did was talk on Twitter. That's all I did. And I was coming on with these people who were making supplements and in games and did this. And I was like, I don't even, I am not that caliber. Why am I here? <laughs> so my advice to myself would have been like, it, just, just have fun. Don't worry about it. You don't have to give something. I like that. Because <laughs> for me, it'd be like, uh, learn how to do an intro and an outro when you're asked. <laughs> who you are, what you do. Matt, I've been doing this for three years and I still can't do either of those things. <laughs> I still, yeah. I still don't know how to do that. Like, I am, uh, 
going to botch that in 30 minutes. So. <laughs> I still feel like Jay Casual needs to give a course on how to do intros because his are Absolutely. epic. <laughs> and they rhyme sometimes. Oh, I know. Only if we can get T.T. Benjamin along with that same thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ben's intros are amazing. There are Ooh, some people also... that just have that talent and it's just like, I'm just like, I'm me. Here I am. This is me. Yay. Hi, <laughs> do the thing. Dan's awkward and let him tell jokes for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hit real close to home. I need a moment. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, got to call me out like that? Come on. <laughs> I don't know what I would tell myself. Like Star Side, like it's, uh, you know, it it was three years ago. Um, very different places at that point. Yeah, seriously, and and literally too. Like I was on a different channel twice before <laughs> finally landing back on my own channel. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess you know, like, and and that's ultimately what I started doing. But shoot your shot, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you never know who you'll there. you know get the chance to interact with i mean that's literally how i ended up with mark Mir and b dave walters on here i just took a chance and it worked you know it was a calculated risk and it paid off so like the worst that they could do is ignore the tweet but they didn't you know so yeah and i mean like even for me it's like maybe i didn't meet some of some people through tales but tales definitely gave me this confidence to be like if someone says you want to do something just yes or you know if you want to do something just reach out and say this is what i'd like to do like that's how i met dan and that's how i met plot hooks and those have been some really long lasting important friend relationships that i have now <laughs> so absolutely i mean yeah. i'll be honest and i'll reiterate the fact this point do not be afraid to reach out when i was first in the space it was like well, gee, I don't know what I'm doing. I guess I'll ask. I don't know. They're so big, they're not going to say yes. And then I've gotten so many yeses just because I have asked. What's the, they're going to ignore you or say no. Mm -hmm. And be cool and move on. And follow-up is do not harass people with the ass. Yeah. If you get nothing, just leave it at that. Be cool. Luna, my advice to you would have been, yes, you do deserve to be doing this. <laughs> That imposter syndrome was real. Was? What? Say that again? <laughs> was? <laughs> Your imposter syndrome, especially early on, was definitely real. Oh, yeah. Um, Sorry, I was chasing my cat off of the top of my computer <laughs> tower because she is prone to turning off my PC when she gets up there. <laughs> oh, not today, that. Kidding. It wouldn't be the first time on stream. Nope, not today. <laughs> nope, it's happened at least twice. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's always fun. Um, let's see. Yeah, Lord Richter just said I've lived my whole life with the, the worst that happened they can is they can say no. So yeah, it's true. Yeah. Bought a stick on a button cover to print. That's smart. <laughs> I, I, I need to do that. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, Lisa, Lisa, do you guys have a favorite character uh, or favorite world you've made as a player or DM? Um, my my favorite character I'm actually playing right now on the Etherlog. Um, I get to play as Gale, who is a uh, um, he's a shifter, but he's a snake. So uh, and so it, it's interesting. Of uh, he's a monk. To, well, he started off as a monk, but I've been giving him fighter levels because that's what I do. And um, yeah, just playing him out. He's like the most morally ambiguous one, but lawful. So he's kind of just, I don't know. I get to, I'm really exploring the depths of this character. And I'm loving it. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Also, I just had that realization that a monk with flurry of blows and acts and action surge. We're going there. Yeah. yeah, perfection. He, he's a he's gonna be a battle master too. So he's all about yes. disarming people. So he's gonna like walk up on them, take their take their stuff, and then just beat them down. Complete I'm gonna make control. Him a oh. yeah. Awesome. 
I didn't know I need that in my life. I will rip your arm off and beat you to death with it. (laughs) 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 Um, Well, I guess my favorite characters like I don't get to play very often. I I DM more now. Um, But I think my favorite characters that I've played have been the one that's on um, Outcast and Outclassed. Um, Just because she's complex and I'm still waiting for the fun to come out for that. But I think my favorite favorite so far has been playing Rin on Agents of Nyx with 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 Dan. That was Rin was fun. <laughs> Rin was fun. Um, I don't know. She was just she was a monk. It was the first time I played a monk, and she was just awesome. She was a revenant that had come back, so she had no face, so she had to wear a mask, and it was it was just fun. I think the characters, and in all honesty, it's one of those like the characters that are fun are also because other people were fun to play with it. So I think it was also very much because Utahime was there and Jay was there and <laughs> Joel was there and Andy was there. So that was, we're all really great. And to give you background on that, the entire, it was a mini series, which is basically Suicide Squad meets, a, meets Agent, eh, Agent, eh, dang it, I can't say the word, Ancient Greece Mythology in Theros. So smash those cool. two ideas together. And basically the only goddess that was remaining was Nyx and all the other gods and goddesses killed off. They had no idea why. And the little squad that ran around had to stop realm ending disasters from happening. And we went some real deep, dark places. Yeah, we did. <laughs> that was awesome. That was fun. Well, to I piggyback. Think... Oh, go ahead. I think my uh, my favorite characters they're tied with two uh my cyberpunk 2020 character that i played for a year named uh, lucas channel i loved that character to death however it was fun it was fun playing kind of the like anti-hero of the story because my because uh, i was a, playing a corporate character in a world where corporations are just not loved at all and then I'd have to say, because Luna will know this very well, when uh, we played a cypher game a couple of months ago, and I played a half-cybernetic, half-human samurai named Theory, and that was just so much fun, because of the crew that we were with, I ended up I ended up launching one of our players into a wall, <laughs> and just based on the fact that my character was like this chaotic character, but like it's still still good so like a chaotic good character but it was just a lot of fun playing that one character for that one day without a doubt best character has always been dave (laughs) dave started as a pc uh he was a one foot six inch tall gnome alchemist who also had a little bit of warlock uh he used to ride the barbarian into battle and he had a little harness on top of the backpack, and that was all fun and games until the incident with the potion of fireball. Um, <clears throat> that may or may not have accidentally broken on the back of the barbarian's head. Um, <clears throat> oh. And if you guys are familiar with the Dothraki from Game of Thrones, his tribe too had all of their honor tied to their braid, which doesn't oh. survive a fireball directly to it. Oh but... no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh yeah. But Dave ended up becoming uh, one of my favorite DM tools because he became my Fizbin. He became my, uh, when I needed any type of exposition done, Dave shows up. And Dave has traveled through uh, Forgotten Realms, Dragonlance, uh, Ravenloft, Star Wars, Star Trek. And the last iteration of Dave actually saw him as a computer virus in Star Wars. He took over a Star Destroyer. He turned on this strange ancient song uh, that was going, Oh, 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 stay alive, stay alive. As the turbo lasers were firing off in uh, sequence and it entered hyperspace. (laughs) So that was the last time we ever saw Dave. But Dave will be back. He's epic. Now, was Dave the one that became uh, an NPC in Aether and Steamworks? Yes, a Dave Canon is NPC. a Dave is go, is a uh, NPC in a Thursday works not yes. Nice. <laughs> so I think yeah, I don't have a favorite character because I've only played a few here and there, and I 
haven't really had the chance to dig in. But one of my favorite settings I've ever come up with, and I've had the opportunity to run this a few times, is called Welcome to the Fungeon, which is basically yeah. a... Matt's played in the game. It's a randomized table where you end up in a dungeon for whatever random petty reason that the bad guy has decided on. And the players roll a d20, and each room is randomly generated off of a table. I'm up to 35 goals to hit 100, and it is nothing but a pure excuse to improv. I'll get a couple of the rooms are the Great Dungeon Bake Off, uh, whose pun is it uh -huh. anyway? Uh, the Albera Rodeo, uh, and there's a bad, there's a dating game in there, and I'll leave it at that. But there's it's a lot of fun, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, it's one of the highlights of my D and D career. I got a uh, faded yep. black with Tiamat. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> so okay, yes. well, check right there. That's a bucket list. <laughs> Five of them. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's it, I've had the most fun with that creatively because it it'll, it's given myself as a DM a chance to stretch stretch my skills, but also I've run it for players that are new, and it actually gives them a nice framework to think outside of the box of just combat. How else can we approach this? The last time I ran it, the ladies I was doing it for had a complete. They ended up meeting Brittany, the Amazon spear, and they did a complete. A complete, like, we had music running, everything. They each picked a different era of Britney Spears, and in their characters, they did a massive, like, sing and dance off with it. It was phenomenal. Oh my god! This is only, like, the yes. third time they had ever played. So it's like, okay, they're getting it. So it, it's, I, it's chef's kiss. So, hey, if you ever want me to run it for you, hit me up. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think everybody has heard me talk about Edabrix at one time or another. Um, Edabrix was <laughs> definitely a favorite. Um, another favorite of mine though was from like super early on when I was getting into D and D. I played. Um, I made a character who was a Kender, and uh, the character was based on my kiddo who was like two at the time. So basically all the shenanigans that she would get up to during the week is what my Kender did during our next game. <laughs> and it was amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I I had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> yeah, she would just find things randomly, you know, as Kender do. So yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. Well, Luna. I know, I'm just up. I'm opening mine right now. Okay. Oh, we're on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's our last yeah, one taking us to Ready. Puerto Rico. This was, in my opinion, this is my favorite one out of the match. Without a doubt. You'd say this was the hottest one? I think so. I think this is the hottest one, if I remember correctly. It was my favorite. I know that for sure. The flavor of this is just All right. so nice. Nice and soaked. Here we go. Takes a minute, but there it is. Yep. That is Woo! not terrible. Yes. Oh, hello. Mm-hmm. You know, you not okay, as Luna? hot as the other. Oh, wait, nope, there it is. There it is. There <laughs> it is. I've yep. discovered it. There it is. Yeah, hey, like I said, it takes yeah, a minute, but a there minute. it is. <laughs> this is a journey. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm going to feel that one on my tongue it? for a while. What enhances it is with the candy corn. It's a weird mix. Mm -hmm. Under another one. Dude, I actually, yeah, that was so good. I'm actually I'm going to do it again. Right, here we go. Yeah, I feel like those were a lot. Like those were all spicier than the other rounds that we did, but they weren't like terrible. <laughs> no, none of these mm. were lethal hot sauces at all. Now I kind of feel like I should have gotten them to show people how the weak react. <laughs> you know, Star, we can do that in two weeks over on another channel. Oh, God, that's right. 
We'll just send it over your way. Here's some uh, hot sauce for you. <laughs> but I'm so Czech. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Amazing. I come from rural Minnesota where they think that ketchup is spicy and garlic is the best spice, okay? <laughs> <laughs> ketchup is spicy. <laughs> I've gotten better, but not much. It gets yeah, better. Right. It gets I had be to go I had to go <laughs> grab better. a real bottle of hot sauce. <laughs> Joel, I'm yes, from Michigan. See? Star speaks the truth. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Garlic is the spicy stuff we use here. You just put enough so it burns. That's where we go. <laughs> I don't know if you want. I don't know if you're doing that right. Yeah, uh, right. It, it, if the garlic burns, you've put in enough, and that's when it's good. Come on. I see. <laughs> Ooh. Aurelia had a perfect one in there. What a burger spicy ketchup is one of the greatest things ever created. Uh, oh, so good. I've never had what a burger. You three need to come down here. We finally now. got them. I've had so, why a burger and was a burger. <laughs> <laughs> Do not laugh at that. That was not good. <laughs> Since we're going for flavor tonight. Oh my goodness. That sounds good. That sounds good. I love they're, this stuff. They're using that at Taco Bell now. What, Truff? Are they? Yeah. I don't think it's Truff. All right. I don't know. But <laughs> while uh yeah. while he does that, I'm going to I'm going to give everybody real quick uh time for one last This is a thing. You can participate or not. It's totally optional. 60 second villain monologue. You can thank Emily for that. 60 second villain monologue. Yep, okay. a villain monologue. Luna, can I do you, my one You'd have from to give me a lawful yeah, great. Go for it. Oh god. All right, hold on. <clears throat> Look at you. So small, so pathetic. How did you even how did you even manage to make it up this far? There is nothing that you have that can even possibly come even a tenth part close enough to take care of what needs to be done. Your entire life, you've been nothing but a sniveling little coward. You've always had to hide behind everyone else. Oh, you think you're a wizard? Then why are you having to hide behind the rest of everyone else be that are that's in front of you right now? No, you don't have what it takes. Your dreams, I know what they're like, because I've been there. I'm the reason why you have woken up, covered in sweat, shaking, begging to never go back to sleep again. You are weak, and you are never, ever, taking this from me well then <laughs> so says my bottle of truff is it will not give me hot sauce <laughs> See, I've been thinking about this I've actually never had any of my bad guys monologue I've more of had it been a conversation between them and the party before they get down to business. And I kind of like... Go ahead. No, you go. You go. I was going to say, I sometimes like to show what they're doing through actions in the world as opposed to monologuing, because I think that might has, has more impact. Not that I'm against monologues or anything, I just don't do them well. And I do better when I'm feeding off what players are giving me. Fair enough. Like I, you know, it's like you always want to, and then the moment comes, you're like, "Yes." About what? Yeah. <laughs> but I can give it a shot. It might not be great, but we can give it a shot. I have 
a character at my big bad that my if my anyone from my game is listening go away because um, <laughs> <laughs> they're in this moment where they don't know which side's the bad guy quite yet ah um they've gotten both different sides but the the sovereign who is a daywalker vampire <laughs> is kind of the big bad of this um i want to give him a look no <laughs> Sorry, um, not doing a Gary monologue, um, but you would. There's good and there's evil. Which one do you side is which? Are you good because you fight for others? Am I bad because I fight for myself? Or am I just simply fighting for what you are, just more selfishly? If you're helping others, aren't you being selfish? Wanting others to see you in the good light, not acting to help, but to be seen as good. So which one of us is really evil? The one that's open about our selfishness? Or the one who decides that they need to be seen as a hero? <laughs> Excellent. That was good. So I'm not good at improv. I'm really bad at it. I know, same. <laughs> but the, hor the horrible thing is, is like any time that I try to do any form of villain speech because I'm basically wrestling promos, it just ends up at seeing like a scene as a pro wrestling promo. Yes. <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see no problem here. <laughs> okay. Wolf's blood. You think you're funny, don't you? You think that you can just come in and take my title of pun lord from me just that easily? Yeah, you do think you're funny, don't you? I can give you anything you want with just a snap of a finger, but that title is not something you'll be getting from me. And if you want it that bad, you're going to have to take it from me. Think you have the ability. You certainly don't have the brain. And you certainly don't have the fire inside to attempt. <laughs> I have to have some I have to have some sort of subject. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, Wolf's Blood's just there. People that always impress me are the ones that are like, go into this monologue and all of a sudden you realize like they're talking about they're going to steal your toesy woesies from underneath <laughs> the blankets once you fall asleep this evening. Or David Tilstra's <laughs> when you realize he's talking about Taco Bell. <laughs> hey, the hidden all meaning. All the tacos from the bell. <laughs> Hidden uh, meanings in this a promo is, is great. Wendy's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Wendy's. Uh, well. Uh, are you trying to one? Oh, Dan? yeah. <laughs> are, I'll try you one if I... you try one. Shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, someone Devil give me a topic in chat and yeah. make it a silly one. Give me a silly topic to monologue about. Lord Richter says, come on, Dan, use me as your focus. <laughs> uh, now I need a topic first. Give me something. Cheesy poofs. <laughs> oh, okay. So we have cheesy on. poofs. Take the gummy bears for, uh, for me. Uh, the difference between alligators and crocodiles. Uh, pooping is pooping inevitable. Is inevitable. <laughs> Peanut butter. Okay. I'm going to see if I can weave all that together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Match right. promo. All right, all right, all right. Let me get some water here. <laughs> we all poop. Your cheesy poofs. Your peanut butter. Your alligators and crocodiles. We all poop. No matter what you eat, what creature you are, you poop. It may not come right away. It may not be now. And I might be then. It might be runny. It might be dry. It might hurt. It might not. But everyone poops me the bad guy and you the heroes i've seen you out there in the woods late at night 
You've had a little delicacy at the campfire. It didn't sit well with your stomach, a little gurgle, a little pain, <laughs> and then, oh, oh, it burns. And out in the woods you are. There you are, pooping. And there I am in the tree, watching, gathering intelligence for this amazing speech. You in the outhouse. That wasn't an outhouse. That was me shapeshifted as an outhouse to gather your poop. Everyone poops, and you will now pay for it! <laughs> I was waiting for you to bring in the Haribaro, like, sugar-free gummy bears for that oh. last part. Oh my god! Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Whew. Okay, I did not think I could do that, but here we are. Here we are! <laughs> We're not oh worthy, sir. We're right? not worthy. And that's why I need things to <laughs> feed on. Once I have it up here, I can do something. All right, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was surprisingly not crappy at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> a, real, a real humdinger there. Oh. Mm. Okay, fine. I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> my, my whole life, I've had everything everything except for one thing i've always wanted and you've never given it to me i i tried to earn what i thought might do it i i tried to cheat it i went out and i i purchased it i put that name on me you asked for the moon and i tried to give you i went and got you the moon! And, and... You laughed. And now... I own Twitter. Let that sink in! <laughs> that oh, just made no. me so yes. happy! Oh, oh, <laughs> dying inside right now. <laughs> it was oh, so good! Oh. Amazing. Oh. oh my god in the stream now we're not getting better than that <laughs> yeah no that's my plan oh. actually um <laughs> <laughs> i mean we can't end on an elon musk joke can we like uh yeah i think we, I, mean, I think we have to <laughs> you got a giveaway still uh all right we do have a giveaway still that we need to draw so uh, if you didn't get in, exclamation point, enter for a $30 gift card to Gemmed Firefly. Your odds are pretty good right now, people. Thank you, Gunstar. <laughs> Best thing I knew to give away, so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are going to close entries. And pick a winner. Good luck, everybody. Fingers crossed. Toes crossed. Lorcalon! Yay! Congratulations. Yay, all the winners. So, um, uh, Star, do you want them to reach out to you directly? Yeah, if you just want to shoot me a message on Discord, I can uh, get that to you. Cool. Cool, cool. Awesome. Um, well, thank you all to everybody who um, provided a giveaway. That was very generous, um, very awesome of you all. So um, thank you for that. Um, we did not have the chance to get to all of the questions tonight, um, but I'm still trying to finish up a Mad Libs that I started about halfway through. So real quick, I need a place. Valhalla. Valhalla, okay. All right, now I need um, another place, but a plural. Strahd's outhouses. <laughs> I'm going to just leave it at outhouses because I don't rate that small. <laughs> <laughs> Adjective. Yummy. <laughs> um, another adjective. Juicy. <laughs> Juicy. <laughs> I can't wait to see how yummy and juicy come into this. Uh, and, yep. An outhouse. An animal. An oh, no. outhouse. <laughs> yeah, well. mm -hmm. And what? Is that it? Animal. Uh, what did you guys say? Alligator? 
Uh, I already used oh, that one. <laughs> Wait, Albert. Throw in an Albert. 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 Okay. Yeah, an Albert. Yeah. Type of liquid. Hot sauce. Well, Hot sauce. There you go. Hot sauce. Yes. <laughs> that is the correct answer. <laughs> Plural noun. Aliens. Aliens. Adjective. Scary. <laughs> and one more noun. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. All right. D&D &D Mad Libs, Tools of the Table. When you first start playing Q&D, you'll need these sloppy things to help you hit the cheese running. The Player's Chin Book, The Cheesy Poof Master's Guide, An Alligator Manual, and other books also have lots of useful information. Dice. You'll need more dice than you can rot a stick at, but especially D20s. Number 42 pencils. Leave your pens in your Valhalla. You won't need them here. Snacks are the butt of every good game, uh, of every good game of outhouses and dragons. Hungry players are yummy, but a juicy DM can be an absolute owl bear. Don't forget to drink plenty of hot sauce. Mats and figurines can be useful for visualizing action-packed aliens. With these things and a scary attitude, you're ready for the time of your pumpkin. I am now determined all... to be the juicy DM. <laughs> and I now want to run outhouses and dragons. <laughs> They're all mimics, beware. Yep. Oh, gosh. I want to eat the butt of the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Awesome. Well, thank you guys all so much. Um, let's go around um, and do another round of just a quick who you are, where people can find you on social media, and all that good stuff. Um, we'll go in the reverse order of when we started. So, Wolfie, we're going to start with you this time. Hey, everybody. I am Wolfie, or Wolfsblood2012. Find me on Discord. If you're going to find me on Twitter now, please find me at Elon's Dead Taint. And uh, that is not a joke. That is actually now my uh, official Twitter, which is amazing, and I love it. Uh, do check me out, though. I'm going to start hosting a Saturday afternoon matinee game on luna's discord it is going to be based on aether and steamworks it's going to be episodic you can jump in every saturday every other saturday a saturday every six months i don't care jump in have fun we will do like some a team style shows and uh, it's just a fun table to play at that's me awesome <laughs> wolfie uh i can't thank you enough um for all your help uh mm. always and forever and um i appreciate you're, you very much and thank you for coming on and hanging out tonight so I, I'm sorry. I had a blurb for me. I need to throw it into chat real quick. Oh, um, okay. Yep. So I, I, I'm concerned. Yep. So here, here's my blurb. So there you go, Luna. Aww. Thank you. Oh, uh, it's very sweet. That's very sweet. Um, I feel like I should read that out loud for anybody who's listening to the podcast version, but I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, I'll read it out loud for you. So this is a dedication to Luna. She's been the hostess with the mostest, an amazing creator bringing hundreds together to chat and enjoy their passion. But what's more, she's my friend and someone I know will be part of my life every day forward. Love you, Luna. Thank you for being such a bright star to so many of us. Guys. And that's from Wolf's Blood. <laughs> well, Very I wasn't going to cry tonight, but okay. <laughs> every stream needs a cry session. Mm-hmm. So far, we've managed to not do that on this one. So, <laughs> aw, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Wolfie. I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> Coffin says not a single pun. Was it really from Wolf's Blood? <laughs> uh, well, Is that how thank we know you. you've been held against your will? <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm, Star, do your thing. <laughs> I'm Star Shinobi. You can find me at Star Shinobi Instagram and Twitter. You can find me every other Thursday on the Waffles Maple Syrup channel to play Outcast and Outclass. It is a Pathfinder 2E campaign. Uh, we just actually celebrated our one year uh, this past Thursday, so we've made it so far. We have, we're on level two. <laughs> yeah. um, but other than that, I just want to say thank you to Luna, and I think everyone should definitely shout some love out to Luna. She's been doing this for three years. That means she's brought at least 400 of us together. 
So you have touched the community in such a way that no one can really express. You've brought so many of us together. You have brought a lot of us into confidence to be part of this community more than we were before. And I don't think we can overstate the touch you've had on us. So thank you, Luna, for all of this. Thank you. Aww. Um. <laughs> thank you. I, I, thank, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> no, I... I Trust me, I get it. Don't worry about it. We're going to send love to you now. You don't have to say anything back. <laughs> uh, well, Star, thank you for being here for the last episode. Um, I'm glad we got to squeeze you in one more time. Um, you know, I, I I know. Well, I'm going to have to go back now and actually like do a count of the number of times different people were on just so we can see who actually held the record. So I'm pretty sure it's Shannon. I'm pretty sure. It might be, but it has been a while since Shannon's been on. So True. Yeah. Ray uh Ray Mayhem is right up there now too, so mm, true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Rain. Well, I'm I've been Rain. Uh you can find on Twitter at Big They Energy. You can also find me lurking around on uh, Luna's Discord server and multiple other TTRPG Discord servers if you I just happen to be lurking around every once in a while. Uh, you can come find me on Twitter. I tweet about video games. I write about video games, um, pro wrestling, and other things like that. Might interest you, might not. But once again, as Star said, thank you, Luna. I'm sure that we're going to be friends for quite a long time. My therapist. <laughs> and you were the first person I came out to. You were the first person when I changed my name. You were the first person that I messaged and you gave me such confidence to open about myself to do that with and you've always been just so nice to me when other people haven't so thank you very very much well thank you and i am glad that uh you know i'm glad that you are finding your way and that you know things are Things are good, and I'm glad that you're in my Discord, and you know that we get a chance to to talk all the time. Also, your cat's adorable. <laughs> Miles, uh, Miles, Miles loves you too. I know. I love Miles. Um, Dan. Okay, I'm totally not prepared for this, but here we go. I will <laughs> wing this. So I've been Dan, still in Dan. Eh, let's see. Well, maybe I'll keep that. Uh, but no, seriously. Um. You can find me over on the Creators Assemble channel. If I'm not on there, I'm behind the scenes producing. Upcoming in the next couple of weeks, we've got some really cool stuff coming. We've got an interview with uh, Jamie Moonchild this coming Thursday, a week from Thursday to be announced, but I'll give a little sneak peek here. We are going to be running a Black Panther themed one shot with Lamar the Con Guy and some other cool folks in the space. It's an all African American uh, live stream that we're going to be using to raise some funding for a charity to be announced and also a couple weeks after that we will be premiering the second episode of the what the hearts want spell jammer miniseries that we're running that is phenomenally wacky and i will leave it at that and then i also want to say heartfelt luna thank you for taking a chance on me i think i was you were one of the first places i ever live streamed outside of the creators assemble channel to give me that chance to actually live stream and would not over there and getting to meet wonderful people uh putting up with my horrible horrible jokes and just being a nice beacon of niceness kindness and hope and light to the community it is seen and appreciated and thank you for everything that you've done and you will be missed here but we will certainly see you on twitter and i'm sure all over a whole bunch of other streams Yes, definitely. Um, Dan, thank you. It's been a pleasure to get to know you. And I'm glad that, you know, you've been able to make appearances here a few times. And, um, you know, it's always a pleasure to hear about the stuff that you've got going on with Creators Assemble. And um, Jamie's actually a really good friend of mine. So I was thrilled when I heard that you guys had her coming on. Um, she's she's actually playing in my Blades in the Dark game. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, you will not be disappointed. She's fantastic and I love her to bits. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you're in the space and, you know, finding, finding people to connect with. It's, it's awesome. Matt. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Matt. Uh, you may know me as Dungeon Glitch. 
on Twitter. I'm pretty much everywhere, but Twitter is where if you actually want to talk to me. Um, I own Gem Firefly. I make nerd shirts and mugs and flags and all that stuff. Um, I make music. If you're into that sort of thing, anywhere music is streaming, you'll actually find my uh, my next my third album comes out in two weeks on the uh, November 11th. It's called the Bard at College Dropout. Uh, <laughs> it's you figure you, na- you name something like that's related to Kanye and he explodes. It's like all right, cool. So, <laughs> um, also, I play Gale on the Etherlog. Uh, anywhere you find podcasts, uh, that that's on new episodes on Tuesdays. I think we're on episode ten this week. So, oh my goodness. super excited about that. Yeah, it's really fun. It's getting pretty wild. Um, yeah. So, Luna, like I mentioned before, you have helped me build my confidence in working with people because I was super shy about it. Everyone thought I, I just didn't want to work with anyone, and I kind of didn't. And it, but it, but for different reasons, you know, it was just like I was just afraid of it. So when I came onto this, it really helped, and for that, I am super grateful. And I'm grateful to have you as a friend because, like, you know, we talk about food and yeah, we totally really stuff. All the time. And yeah. uh, one of these days, we're going to have to try out that Gordon Ramsay spot that you keep telling me about. Yeah, so. let's go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, for all the, uh, as, as you've heard from everyone else, all the positivity and <laughs> kindness and your, your ability to bring people together, um, even though you're not actually going anywhere, I'm going to be trying to actively do more of that myself. And it's your fault again. So... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so again, we're just going to keep talking anyway. So it's yeah, not like it's, it's true. Goodbye. It's goodbye to everyone in chat. Later, y'all. Yeah, right? Peace out, <laughs> Um Matt, thank you. Yes, it's it's been a pleasure to to get to know you and and you know count you among my friends and um, yeah. One of these days when I head down that direction, we will definitely have to uh, connect and hang out. So, um, yeah. I don't I don't know what else to say. Um I am Gamer Mom Luna. This has been Tales from the Tavern. Um I Oh my god. I didn't think I was going to cry, but here it comes. <laughs> um I could not have done this over the last 3 years without my moderators. Um Wolf's Blood, Corin, Smith, Pirate. Um I know I'm forgetting people. Um uh, but you know, they're the people that you know have been along right from uh right from day 1. Um shadow who you know has been a moderator for me you know sort of in passing but you know always always there um you know i could not have run this stream without everybody's help um you know it really i yes i did all of the like actual streaming and finding guests but it really is a team effort you know corin every week consistently there feet making sure that i get the questions and wolf's blood doing the blurbs every week and you know helping you know pinch hitting when a guest drops out and things like that um kyellen um for giving me free use of all of the music that has been in the background of all the episodes um ty who did all the overlay art uh who did the video um i couldn't have done any of this without them um you know, Ty, like I said, he did all my overlay art when I moved channels um, for the second time, redid all the art and charged me like 25 bucks, you know, because that's just how Ty rolls. And um, he is amazing. Um, Chat, who has been here every week. Uh, I mean, it this I couldn't do this if Chat didn't show up every week. Um, the people who supported me via Patreon when we had the Patreon going, um, yeah, I was like, I need to like bullet out, you know, all the people that I want to thank, but I, I didn't. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I just, I, I can't say enough good things about the community. Um, I can't say enough good things about all the people that we've had on the stream. Um, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing three years and um, I'm really proud of everything um you know that we built up through uh through doing tales um all of the people that i've met the amazing partnerships that i've seen come out of you know two people who just happened to be on the same episode and now we're creating systems and you know working together regularly and um you know new people who uh 
Corin, who's also uh, Apache in chat, like really didn't know anything about TTRPGs when he came on to, to mod the stream and now, you know, is always looking to learn more about different systems. I mean, I can definitely say he knows more about different systems than I ever did when I first got into the TTRPG space. So, um, I, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. Um, so I'm just going to stop there before I start babbling. Um, but thank you all. Um, thank you to everybody who heard me out when the stream got tough, when things were really challenging, when we had to change channels a couple of times because of shutdowns and, and, you know, partnerships that failed and, and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, the people who, uh, basically said when I had the chance to move over to my own channel, like, yes, you have to do this. You have to keep, keep going. Um, because I would have completely shut down at that point if I didn't have those people behind me. And I'm so glad that I didn't and that I ran this for another year, um, afterwards. So thank you all. Thank you, chat. Um, thank you to all the people who have been subscribers over the years. Um, I, I that's all I got. So... Normally I would turn this over to a raid, but I feel like that's just not the appropriate way to end tonight. Um, so I'm not going to raid anybody tonight. Uh, I'm going to just sign off. Um, but yes, I will still be doing streams. I will still be doing, uh, you know, every, all kinds of stuff on Twitter. Um, I work on a blog, uh, shadowmain.com, um, where I jokingly say you can microdose tales from the tavern. We have interviews every Wednesday that go out. Um, that's, you know fun questions from people in the community. Um, Matt's done one. Um, I know there's been a few other people who have done one. I can see my kids standing behind me right now with a cat. So <laughs> if you see a cat floating in midair, that's why. Um, I uh, I love to I love to knit dice bags. Uh, Keone mentioned dice bags. I love to knit dice bags for people. So, uh, you know, if you're ever in need of a hand knit dice bag, I'm your girl. And um, yeah, I'll still be around. So, you know, look for me on Discord. My Discord's not going anywhere. Um, you know, that'll still be up and running. I'm just not going to be streaming anymore because I just can't. <laughs> I've sort of hit that point where I need to retire from running my own stream. So um, thank you all so much. Uh, it's been fantastic. Um, and I am so glad that you all were here tonight to uh, to join me. So uh, I am Gamer Mom Luna. This has been Tales from the Tavern. I hope you have a great night. Take care, everybody. <laughs>